This video is sponsored by EA and their new game, Immortals of Avium, which is a high-energy single-player FPS game developed by Ascendant Studios and published under the EA Originals label. Check out the link in the video description to find out more and buy the game. You play a role in a compelling story as Jack, a battle mage who can cast spells against legions of soldiers and deadly magic wielders in Avium, which is a majestic war-torn land rife with conflict. Now, combat's easy to understand but difficult to master. You can unlock more than 25 spells and 80 talents in a single form of magic, or you can use multiple forms of magic to make combos. In the game you wear a sigil, and that makes the magic more powerful. The sigil's worn on your right arm and helps focus the magic, making it more deadly in combat. There are various sigils, each one is for a specific type of magic and strike spell, and they've got different capabilities and can grant different bonuses that can enhance spells or increase armour. You can have three sigils at a time, one for red, green and blue magic, and they can be swapped instantaneously so you can adapt to situations quickly and perform various spell combinations. So I was asked to do this promo, make something to promote the game, but I didn't really know what to do. I was going to make a sigil that could shoot something like foam darts or some other projectile, or maybe we could shoot fire or we could shoot burning lasers or something like that. But most of these things have been done already. You've already seen loads of burning lasers, popping balloons, loads of videos like that there. So I thought I'd do something totally different. How about if we use lasers to actually apply a force and push something over? Now, no one's ever done a video like that before, and that's because no matter how hard you try, you can't push something down with a laser, and that's because a laser is just light, and photons of light have no mass, so you can't apply any force to anything. Sure, if I had a really high power laser that would cut through all the cups, the rest might fall down, but I don't really want to set fire to my house. But this isn't a video about nothing, I've actually achieved making hard light with a laser that can push objects down. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. But first of all, I better make a magic sigil. So I drew my sigil in CAD. This is a proper engineering model, a solid model for one of the blue sigils. And that means that the parts are all proper solid pieces which have recesses built into them so I can print them all separately and glue them back together. So I've left a socket there so the front piece can be glued on and I've got flat surfaces on the bottom for printing. Although the part's quite complicated so we do need lots of support material to try and print some of the pieces in the air. And some of those details are very fine. Some of the cross sections are as small as two millimeters. The first attempt didn't go too well because I couldn't really get the support material off without actually breaking it which is what happened and the thing actually snapped clean in half. So I went back to print it again with a printer that's got dual extruders and I decided to have a go with water soluble support. So I've got a printer here which will switch between the two extruders one is printing PLA and one is printing PVA which is water soluble. So the white stuff is water soluble and we can just drop that in water for a few hours and it will dissolve away and that makes it much easier to get the support material off. So after an hour or two we can come back and some of that will just come away in big chunks. So we can take all of that off as much as we can, clean the water and leave it for a bit longer. So after another couple of hours we can see most of it's gone and we can squidge most of that off. An hour later and some more clean water and the rest is gone and we've got our completely clean part. So that's come out much better this time. It takes a lot longer switching between extruders all the time to do water soluble support, but it's much, much cleaner than it would be if I had to remove that support material made of the same material. So the bottom of it's not too bad as well. And I made all the other parts as well. Some were printed flat on the bed and some had support material like the side parts here. And gluing it together gives our completed sigil, or at least the main body of it. There's still some detail parts that we need to add. Now I don't really make cosplay props but here we are, this is the best I can do with a bit of gold paint, some more silver details and some blue beads added just like the game. And it seems to fit my hand okay with some foam attached and some velcro straps. Yep, seems like the right scale and I'm pretty sure I can cast magic with it. So this is a blue sigil and that means I've got some blue laser pointers for it to make my laser effect. I took the little modules out so they're much much smaller and if we go and put three volts on them we can see the laser dot. Normally they run off two AAA batteries each and we're going to run them off the same battery and build them into the sigil. So I've put them onto a mount here which has got the two AAA batteries in a battery box and we've got a little micro switch so that when I press it we can see the two dots. 
In the game you can see the magic in the air and the only way we can really do that with low power lasers is with a smoke machine so that when we shine the lasers there's something for them to reflect back off. So if I make the room dark and we fill the room with smoke then we can see the two laser beams shining out of the two lasers. It's pretty much the only way to do it unless you've got a ridiculously high power laser. I realised of course that my hand's in the way, wherever I put them in the actual sigil you can't see them anymore because my hand blocks the light. So I've made this plate that goes on the bottom of my wrist and it's basically got a string that pulls so when I cast magic it turns the lasers on. So that fits nicely underneath the sigil and gives me the good effect so if I do a magic gesture then we can see the two dots shining on the wall there. Well, I've got some tables and on the tables we've got some stacks of cups to shoot at. So you can see my laser dots there on the wall and if we point them at the cups then we can shoot them all down and that seems to be working pretty well. But let's see if we can make those beams visible with a little bit of smoke in the room. Well it's just about visible although I think my hand's blocking one of them and you can't really see it although one is slightly dimmer than the other but the thing still works. So I tried to get some better blue lasers but there doesn't seem to be anything in between normal laser pointer ones and ones that say they can set fire to things so that's no good. However there's loads of green lasers out there, loads of them that are used in clubs and loads of brighter laser pointer lasers. The human eye is much more sensitive to green light as well so with a little bit of smoke and a slightly higher power laser we get almost a solid beam which looks amazing. So I fixed that laser on instead and the results are immediately much better, it's much easier to see that laser and I've got hardly any smoke in the room at all. It's much easier to target and we can see the immediate results of applying magic with the sigil to shoot down the cups. So how does the magic work? So there's actually another aspect to this whole thing, as well as the string that turns on the laser, there's another string which actually pulls the handle of a virtual reality handset. That string just goes round the back and then it's tied onto a screw so it pulls the handset trigger backwards when I pull the string forwards. And this is one of these VR systems which has lighthouses in the room so I don't need to have the headset nearby in order for the handsets to be tracked in 3D space. If I do put the headset on though and have a look around we can see that we've got two virtual tables that are tied up in exactly the same space as the physical tables. And if I hold up my hacked VR handset we can see the sigil mounted on top in the virtual world using the same 3D model. If I pull the trigger we can see these blue bolts of magic getting fired and they fire off in whichever direction I point it to align with the lasers. So I'm using virtual magic in the virtual world tied up in the same space as the physical world to hit physical targets. In my virtual environment I've also got these trigger zones which are basically invisible objects but when an object passes through them we can assign a script to them. So basically when I shoot them with virtual bolts of magic it sends out some serial data to the serial port and the value is unique for each one. There's an Arduino that receives that serial data and triggers a GPIO pin depending on what the value is that's received over serial. There's some suspicious cables and one of those goes up each table leg to the two different tables. I've got some medium sized solenoids and if I put some power on those then obviously the plunger activates and there's a spring return. Those are mounted on some 3D printed brackets and I've got a thin little pokey thing that sticks out of the top to point up through the slats in the tables. Each one of those has a MOSFET module which is more than capable of switching them on and off when I give them a low level signal from the Arduino. And of course all of that's mounted on the bottom of the table and there's a battery in there as well so I'm not running power down really long wires to those solenoids. Here's a slightly wider shot so now you can see the VR tracker on the bottom of my wrist. So basically I'm using the physical sigil to shoot virtual magic and when that magic hits one of those triggers in the virtual world it sends out data from my laptop to the solenoids to knock down the cups in the physical world again. Well, I hope you enjoyed my take on throwing magic in the air to knock things down. Check out the link in the video description to find out more and buy the game.